Good morning everyone from the Bellagio garage. It's a pretty cool view right now and today is a big freaking day. Today's day two of the Bellagio Five Diamond Tournament. It is a $10,400 buy-in and uh, I'm starting off these vlogs on day two and day one, let me just recap. Um, I, I decided to not vlog them because usually day ones aren't super relevant, crazy, but uh, <laughs> I'll give you guys uh, an update via Instagram stories, flashbacks, recapping day one, insane, insane. Uh, I busted the first bullet pretty quickly with pocket fours, they got cracked and it went on an absolute sun run. I won uh, ace king versus kings all in. I started to chip up. I was on a very, very tough table with Fox and Petrangelo, uh, MJ Gonzalez, Joe Chong, Seth Davies. All those players were crazy. Then I went in a massive 200 big blind pot. I had queens cracking kings for like five starting stacks, which is insane. And uh, yeah, then I also turned quads versus Foxen in a three bet pot. Everything just went my way. I found the sun run and today's gonna be fun because I enter as the actual chip leader. How crazy is that in a very, very stacked and tough lineup. And uh, yeah, that's the intro, that's the scene. We're gonna head in there. Late registration is still open. This is going to be a very, very long tournament as a heads up. This is going to be a, a five or six dayer. In this day two, we're only playing five levels. So an hour and a half uh, long levels. We're only playing five of them. So not a lot of play today, seven and a half hours, which makes things pretty easy to be quite honest with you. More relaxed, more comfortable. And uh, yeah, let's battle it out today. Um, have a pretty decent table. I have Dan Smith to my left. He also has a ton of chips. I have 290. 000. Dan Smith has 213,000 and that's it time to battle. I'm done talking. Let's get in there Cards are about to be in the air in a few minutes and it's a big tournament. Let's just try to chip up Let's just try to honestly keep my chip stack and things will be good for the rest of the tournament Entering this day two as the chip leader of the Bellagio five diamond who would have thought we are entering here in level nine blinds are 1,500 1,500 and we pick up queen ten of hearts in the cutoff there's a low jack open at 3,500 here, and I decide on a call with a playable hand. Everyone else folds. We're off to a flop of king, nine, seven, two hearts. Flopping the combo draw, and my opponent bets out 3,000. He has around 80,000 in my stack, and considering that one, I'm in position, two, I have a really big stack. Those two things both combine to allowing me to play pretty damn aggressive here. So I decided to raise it up, take the aggressive line and the high variance line and raise to 11,000. And upon my raise to 11,000, well, we are in quite the pickle. My opponent three bets to 30,000. Oh my goodness. This opponent has about 56,000 behind, give or take. It seems like he has a really strong hand. It could be from over pairs to ace king to sets and maybe two pair holdings like king nine. But um, yeah, outside of that, not a whole lot else. Anyways, um, let's play high variance here. I didn't raise to fold to a three bet here with my really strong combo draw. I make the call and we're off to the turn, which comes the nine of hearts. Oh boy, mixed feelings about this because of course this is a paired board now. So I lose to full houses, but I do have a one outer to full houses with the straight flush, I guess. Anyways, my opponent tanks, thinks about it for a while, and then he just jams? Oh no, I hate my life in this spot. It's a pretty gross situation to be in. Can my opponent ever overplay a hand like aces with the ace of hearts or ace king with the ace of hearts? It's ambitious, but whatever. I hit my flush. I'm going after those chips. I make the call, and my opponent only has kings. <sighs> That's not great. The river, not the jack of hearts, unfortunately. So pretty brutal spot where I lose a very big chunk of my stack early on into the day. I'm down to just over 200 big blinds. What? Good news. The whole reason why you build a big chip stack is because I still have over 100 big blinds in play. Just gotta keep my composure here and play well for the rest of the day. Next hand we get into, I pick up deuces on the button. There's an under the gun open to 3,500. Seems like a pretty solid Europe player. I make the call on the button and we're going heads up to a flop of queen four deuce. That's damn right. Bottom set to redeem myself from my queen 10 hand. My opponent also has about 80,000 effective in here. So 
Let's go for all of it. I decide to bet out 4,000 when my opponent checks it over to me. And now upon my 4,000 bet, he might have just seen me just go crazy with the queen 10 hand. And he check raises to 11,000. Gotta love seeing that. I'm sure my opponent will have plenty of bluffs. We'll be super balanced here with bluffs and value. And considering I'm in position, I'm not going to sh want to shut those bluffs down. I make the call for 11,000 total. We're off to a turn now, which comes the five of spades. My opponent does not shut down, which is awesome to see. He bets out 20,000. Looking at his stack, he's got about 43,000-ish behind. So yeah, why shut him down once again? Just going to make the call with my set. Got to expect me to be good here basically all the time. Now going to the river, which comes a four. Filling up with a full house. I mean, yeah, got to love this situation. Got to love this spot here. And all I'm praying for from my opponent is an all in. And after some time in the tank, he does jam snap. Snippity, snippity, snap call, I win, and I see him up against King Queen. Yep, full house is going to beat a pair of queens, and I'm back up to 300,000, give or take. So right after punting with the Queen 10, the Poker Gods reward me with a set, and I'll win. In the following slot, we move on to level 10, where I have ace, five of diamonds in the big blind. Action folds around to the player in the small blind, the player that I doubled up when he had pocket kings. And it was, I've seen that he doesn't play many hands and he decides to limp. With a hand as pretty as this, I think it's good enough to go for a raise. So I just have to raise it up to 7,000. And for 7,000, he makes the call. Now we're going to a flop of deuce, five, four, rainbow with one diamond. Sitting with top pair, top kicker. Not something you hear a lot when I have ace, five in my hand, but I've got a pair, I've got backdoor flush draws, I've got a straight draw as well. So when he checks it to me, I bet 12,000, and he makes the call for 12,000 here. So pot's brewing. We're off to a turn, which comes a 10, brings in a full rainbow, and my opponent checks once again. I think as thin as it seems, I think I can bet for value here. So I'm trying to get value with my good pair of fives. I decide to go for it and bet 27,000. And for 27,000, once again, my opponent calls. So it seems like this is a pretty big pot brewing here at this point. We're off to a river, which comes a king. All right, this point now, I think I've lost the ability to go for value now. So action's gonna go check, check, and my opponent shows me Pocket fours. Oh my goodness. He has hit two sets against me. This opponent is sun running and I lose a sneaky big pot against him and my chip stack swinging back down. If you can take a look at the top left hand corner of your screen, it shows the timestamp. So this is the next hand. I've been a little card dead now and we're progressing to level 11. I have ace king offsuit on the button and raise it up to 6,000. Small blind player makes the call. He is Dan Smith. Quite good at poker, I would say. Dan Smith makes the call in the small blind. And then the big blind. Three bets to 26,000. Okay. Ace King, I've been really tight. I have been folding a lot. This is go time. This opponent has about 140,000 in the stack. And I can't imagine this big blind player to be three betting too light. But uh, Ace King is such a good hand, especially from these positions. So let's pump some more into the middle. I decided to four bet to 65,000. It's a rather small four bet given I'm in position and, you know, the stacks are relatively shallow, about 70 big blinds. Anyways, when Dan Smith folds in the small blind, the big blind doesn't take too long before shoving. Oh, no, this isn't comfortable. Look, I'm not four betting here to fold to a five bet, but facing a five bet is so gross. So I don't love this. It has to be done. I'm hoping for a flip, even though I don't want to be in a situation. But come on, let's win. I make the call and he has king nine off suit. What? This, I'm a massive favorite to win a massive hand. Let's freaking go. The flop comes ace high, which basically seals the deal. And the dealer does not give me runner, runner nines to screw me over. And I win piles. Oh my goodness. I caught a massive punt here from my opponent. I stack him. I take his chips. My chip stack is close to 400,000 now, which is insane. So, um, yeah, this was cool. I've been card dead and patience has paid off. 
Let's keep the momentum going here. I'm in level 12. I have over 400,000 in my stack and I have sevens in the cutoff. I raise it up to 6,500 here to start off and the player on the button, Dan Smith to my left, he three bets to 22,000. Action folds back to me and this is the first real hand in battle I'll play against one of the really good players here in the game. He has about 300,000, about 100 big blinds, so I make the call. We're off to a flop of jack, four, deuce, two hearts. Here I have second pair, relatively safe board for the most part for sevens. Anyways, I check and he bets 20,000. About a 40% pot bet. I think here my hand is probably going to call a lot of the time. Given it's Dan Smith, I think my opponent is going to have plenty of bluffs. And maybe some of those bluffs will have a lot of equity against my specific hand. But um, yeah, I definitely don't think that sevens can fold just yet, even though facing a larger sizing, I decided on a call. Turn now comes the queen of diamonds. So this is just no fun at all. I check it over to him thinking and praying for a check, but Dan thinks about it for a while and then bets out 63,000. That is no fun, Daniel. Nice hand to him. I'm just gonna have to fold and give this one up. Nice hand to my opponent. So we are now nearing the end of the day. With about 15 minutes left, we see an insane pot, an 800,000 plus chip pot. And it happens to be a three-way all-in of queens versus ace-king versus ace-jack. Such an insane sick pot to witness. And when queens holds, 99 players are now left into the tournament. And just to give you guys a point of reference, I have a decent amount of chips of 400,000. That pot was double my stack. And even more insane, literally one of the last hands of the night before bagging up, another massive hand happens. There's a player who bets 100 big blinds on the river. There is an incredible rail. Everyone in the poker room is literally watching this hand happen because we're playing hand for hand. Everyone's trying to bag up and waiting for this specific hand to finish. So yeah, anyways, what ended up happening was that a flop straight beats two pair. And um, yeah, an insane hand went down where everyone was watching. All right, just bagged up of day two, heading back home now. I've misplayed some hands. I played some hands well. Overall, I ended up with more chips than I had in the beginning of the day. I started with 293,000. I peaked at 440,000. My lowest was around 200,000. And I ended at 396, which is fine. Or 376, which is fine. So um, on to tomorrow. I'll see you guys in 12 hours. There's 24 left to make the money. I should be able to navigate through that, but we'll see you in 12 hours. On to day three. All right, it's day three, 12 hours later, I am back and yeah, the field is set, the table is set and the field is very, very reg heavy now at this point with 24 players to make the money. We should get there pretty soon within a level or two, I think, an hour or two. And that's that's it. I mean, all I can hope for is to not run to coolers, have good card distribution and um, try to play as well as I can against some really good players at my table. So that's all I gotta say. Starts in 10 minutes, let's just get in there. I have about 80 big blinds, which is plenty. And uh, just don't get coolered is, is the main thing. A lot of ICM stuff going on when we're relatively close to making the money. And um, just gonna be cautious of that, try to play well. And I'll keep you updated with any big hands. Welcome to day three of the five diamond Bellagio, everyone. We are close to making it in the money here and let's get involved. I pick up pocket eights on the button here in level 14 and there's a low jack open to 13,000. Assuming this player will be rather tight as everyone mostly will be, I decide on a call with a good hand and everyone else folds. We're going to a flop of queen 10, seven, two hearts here. So not the best slot for eights. When he checks it over to me, I have third pair and... I think I'm happy to check this one back. So let's see another card. The turn is a 10. My opponent checks one more time. And at this point, I've definitely got to bet for value and kind of for protection now at this point. Lots of stuff can improve and beat me on the river here. So got to expect that my hand will be ahead. I bet 16,000 into the middle and my opponent decides on a call. Now, when he calls here, not feeling great about it, but when the river comes a queen, that is unfortunate. Really bad spot to be in, as now I am double counterfeited and sitting with eight high. My opponent checks once again, and all I'm hoping to really do is bet off hands like king jack or king nine, king high, and maybe I can get ace high to fold. I'm not sure. I decide to go for a relatively small bet, about half the size of the pot to 36,000. And my opponent doesn't take too long before reaching for chips. That's already GG's to me in this hand. 
he does end up making the call with Ace King. So not a great start to the day so far. I arrived with about 400,000 and I am now here with a little over 300,000. Before we arrive to the next spot, I have pocket threes. Player in the hijack, Nick Petrangelo. You might have heard a thing or two about this opponent. He decides to raise it up to 12,000. And with my stack being at around 40 big blinds and in position of him, I think I have an easy decision to play this hand. So let's go set mining. I make the call. And when I make the call, the big blind player, Dan Colpois, this chip leader at the table, calls as well. Now we're going to a flop of Jack 7 10 all hearts. Simply not the flop I'm looking for, dealer. I'm having a really rough time here at this table, and I'm really trying to make the money, guys. Sadly, this isn't it for me, but Ashton's going to check around and see a free turn, which is a three. Wow. All right. All that complaining to the dealer rewards me with basically a one outer because it's an offsuit three, not the heart variety as well. Here, when the turn comes, the big blind decides to overbet the pot to 64000 Nick Petrangelo folds and obviously here facing a really big bet. My opponent is trying to say he has a really good hand or really bad hand, but he's trying to rep a really polar range. And it makes a lot of sense here because the big line is supposed to be very suited heavy. Um, but also I know my opponent, he's definitely balanced enough to have plenty of bluffs. So with bottom set, I am not going anywhere. I'm happy to make the call. And if I see a board pair, I'll be fist bumping so hard. I make the call with about 160,000 left. Not expecting him to ever give up on the river. Give me a board pair, please. The river is the deuce of hearts. Oh my goodness. This day three cannot get any worse than this. What's even worse, my opponent goes all in as I expect him to. I just throw those threes into the muck as fast as I possibly can. I'm obviously very aggravated at this point and my opponent's nice enough to flash me the ace of hearts. I mean, you know, nice hand to my buddy Dan here, but from my perspective, I have lost a lot of chips. I am now on fumes at break and entering level 15 after break. We are now hand for hand. We are two players away to making the money with 74 players left. And this is nerve wracking because we're still on the bubble here, basically. And I pick up sevens in the hijack. Nerve wracking to see a good hand. I raise up to 12,000 and the big one makes the call who covers my stack. We're off to a flop of eight, six, five, two hearts. This is actually a pretty sick board for sevens. I have a pair, I have a straight draw, and, you know, not too scary of a board with only one card over my pair. Anyways, my opponent checks, and I decide to bet 12,000. You know, don't need to bet too big, as we are very, very much incentivized to not put chips into the middle. Anyways, for 12,000, my opponent does end up making the call. We're off to a turn, which comes a black three, Okay, the flush draw didn't get there. It's a card that I think favors the big blind a little bit more. And you know what, with sevens, definitely liking this card, but definitely, like I said, not incentivized to put money in the middle. Action's gonna go check, check. River now comes a bink four. Let's freaking go. Sitting with the nuts, basically. My opponent checks and definitely trying to bet for value. And with a straight here, seems pretty easy to do so. I bet 35,000 and... In hindsight, maybe it looks like I should have bet a little bit bigger because my opponent calls rather quickly. Um, so maybe he had a really good hand, maybe he had two pair, but uh, I'm going to win this one as I show the sevens. And winning a pot, finally. It's been so long, but it feels really good, especially on the bubble. And now, 30 minutes later after that hand happened, we see an all-in. Aces versus jacks, rooting for aces, and it holds. And just like that, we are in the money of the Bellagio five diamond, my second ever cash in a $10,000 buy-in. Shortly after we're in the money, I pick up queen nine of clubs in the big blind. We're playing seven hand here and under the gun opens it up to 13,000. Low Jack makes the call and I'm happy to see a flop with this hand as well. I make the call. Going to a flop of queen six deuce. Pretty good flop with top pair and a good kicker. Action's gonna check the low Jack player and he bets 20,000. Based on how large my opponent went, I don't think I'm going to be check raising here in this spot, although I might a lot of the other times. 
Anyways, b- just basically based on the sizing, I decide on a call and the Unlimited Gun player ends up folding. Now we're going to a turn heads up, which comes the Jack of Hearts. It's essentially a brick. It does add a few more draws available. So when I check it over to my opponent, he decides to bet again, this time not slowing down to 40,000. And with under 200,000 in my stack now at this point, I'm happy to continue. I'm not going to be bloating the size of the pot anymore as my kicker is not so great. So I make the call with about 130 behind. The river is a club, shouldn't change a whole lot here. And action's gonna go check, check. I show my hand and poof. I have over 300,000 now. We are really riding this roller coaster ride and swinging the pendulum of my tournament life here, but always nice to scoop in another pot. All right, welcome to another rendition of the napkin hand histories. This one, uh, the footage is gone. What can I say? So we're on my merch desk and there's a lot of these Luckbox card protectors. If you guys want one, check the link in the description below. I have a ton of these. Anyways, let's get to it. I have cards, I have napkins. I have a box of cards just to troll you guys because I have them here, but I'm sticking to the napkins. All right, uh, we're in the hijack and let's get into it. I look down at king four of clubs. Wonderful. I decide to put in a raise here because uh, I'm in the hijack, want to raise one. I wager 13,000. I'm using napkins. Do I have chips right here to that I could use? Maybe. But napkins, we are going with here. I make the, uh, I raise the 13,000 and the big blind, these are the big blinds cards. He makes the call of 13,000. So we're going to a flop here, which comes ace of spades, queen of clubs, and the nine of spades. So you can see, good board for my range against the big blind opponent. Big blind checks, I decide to wager a bet. And I decide to wager a bet of 12,000 into a pot of, well, technically more than 26,000 because of the small blind and, and ante, but we're going with it. Uh, 12,000, and he matches that 12,000 with these lovely napkins. Wow, look at that beautiful handwriting. Anyways, he makes the call on this flop here, and we're off to a turn, which is the deuce of clubs. Pretty good card for me. Now I've improved to a flush draw, and um, yeah, overall board is still really good for me. My opponent, Knuckles. And I decided to bet again. I choose the path of violence. Although I could check on this board sometimes, I decided to bet. And this one is 60,000. Large wager. This one, I would really prefer to get a fold from. But if he calls, then I want to see a club here. He makes the call of the 60,000. Once again, beautiful handwriting, I know. And we're off to a river, which is the three. But this is a spade. Yes, there's a big difference between a club and a spade. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so I bricked out. I'm sitting with king high. My opponent checks. And now what do I do? What to do? I think about it. I am sitting with king high. Is my hand a good enough bluff candidate? I think it's borderline, but I decided to go for it and throw a massive wager of 150,000 chips. It leaves myself with like 10 big blinds back. So about 60,000 chips, but this is 150,000. And my opponent is tanking. And if you can see from earlier during the day, throughout the day, there are a 30 second timer. So he actually ends up using four time chips. Not that it matters or I'm trying to do the rendition. Let's, he uses four time chips. He uses two minutes of thinking before fucking calling. Damn it. I, uh, I actually don't ever show my cards. So um, these King Ford is the first time anyone's ever seen them because I actually just threw them into the muck and all of this bunch of chips goes to my opponent's way and while he's souping up chips he actually ends up flashing us the five of diamonds as you can see but that's the only card i see i assume he had like ace five or something but my opponent makes a really good hero call i'm stuck with no chips and you are very welcome for another edition of napkin hand histories i am down to sixty six thousand, and uh my tournament life is at the stake of just 11 big blinds before arriving at this next hand a few moments later. I pick up jacks under the gun on 10 big blinds. I go all in. Come on, dealer. Let's find a way to spin this one up. And the opponent who actually basically stacked me makes the call. Wow, poetic justice here. He's going to stack me, isn't he? Because he shows pocket kings. I have a 20% chance to stay alive in this tournament and find a double up. And this time is the other 80%. GG's, uh, I lock up a min cash, which is always fun and nice, but unfortunate I couldn't make a deeper run. 
it all goes down to that bluff. I tried. I tried. And then the jiggities did not work out. At least that looks pretty. I always take losing tournaments so poorly, busting out of tournaments. Bluff didn't work out. Uh, I ran it on my phone. Turns out the bluff that I made, my specific suits actually checks back on the river, but king four of diamonds, hearts, and spades all go all in, which is almost what I did to a certain degree. They play it relatively the same way. I just thought an all in would have been a little too much, 200 and 210,000 versus 150,000. Regardless, I don't know what my opponent had, but he didn't have two pair and made the right fucking call. Shout out to my opponent, guy's a legend. Anyways, that's gonna wrap up this video. I was out for 60, in 65th place. Very, very long bubble, I guess. Uh, I was in for two bullets of this, $10,400. Two bullets of that out for 19,050. Shout out to the people who uh, bought a little bit of action on the second bullet at, on State Kings. You made a little bit of money. Little, little, little sprinkle of a min cash. But that's it, that concludes this video. Thanks so much for sticking to the end. So close, so close. Big shout out to uh, Brad, Owen, and Andrew Nimi, who's still in the tournament. And they're still in the money, they have stacks. So rooting for them to win this one, final table, this one run deep. Anyways, that's it. I'm sure that you've already seen their videos about this tournament, um, because I'm uploading a little late, but appreciate you guys for tuning in. On to the next one, let's get it.